round heavyweight fight, undefeated Patrice Lehero and Tali Kulahapai. And we'll talk about those names later. Big height advantage, you can see, five inches for Lehero. Same 50 pounds in the weight, 10 in the reach. And he's eight years younger. You've got to like those advantages. Well, as we take a look at the Hawaiian Kalohapai. If he knows how to take advantage of those, we'll see. Certainly physically, Leharu has the advantages. 50 pounds, though, Smitty. I love it. As we take a look at Leharu there, undefeated right now. Four knockouts. And as you mentioned, uh, we'll see if he can take advantage of that. Not a great chin on Kalohapai. Want to find out more about these pugilists? Of course you do. And the magnificent Mark Biro's got the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Cedric Kushner Promotions in association with the Reno Hilton presents this Everlast Boxing Explosion event scheduled for six rounds in the heavyweight division. Your referee for this event is Norm Budden. Introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my left, wearing the red trunks, weighing in at 227 pounds. His professional record reads eight victories, four defeats. He has six wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Honolulu, Hawaii. Here is Tali Kulihapai. Kulihapai. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing white trunks, Black trim, weighing in at 277 pounds. He is undefeated in nine professional contests with one draw and four wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Shawanigam, Quebec, Canada. Here is Patrice Lehero. Lehero. Six rounds in the heavyweight division. Okay, gentlemen, you received your instructions in the dressing room. I want to caution you. Anything below here is low. Your trunks are okay. You're a little high, so anything below here, it will be low. Any questions at all? Remember, protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Good luck. Well, for this bout, I'm going to take a page from our director, Bob Dunphy's father's book, the Hall of Fame commentator, Don Dunphy, who, when presented with calling the Gus Lesnovich Anton Christopheridis fight, opted to refer to them as Gus and Anton. So I'm going to opt to call our pugilist Patrice, Patrice Antali. Is that okay with you, Scotty? That'll, that'll work. Because by the time we say their names, the rounds will be over. Patrice would be in the white shorts, and Tali, he is in the red. Tali coming off a uh, loss in, in April at Honolulu. And Lejaro coming off a TKO victory over Richie Goosehead in February in Canada. As far as comparing uh, Patrice to some of the other fighters we've seen on the explosion, he fought a draw with Willie Chapman. Good so experienced fighter. And you, you talk about the last fight we were talking about the, the size. He, he has the size. I think he needs to work on where to distribute that size, Lejaro, but certainly a big, formidable guy, isn't he? When you have a 50-pound weight advantage on somebody, there's so many ways to use that. It's not just about your punching power. It's just about leaning on the other guy. He's doing a pretty good job, Patrice, of shortening his shots. Like that on the inside. There's some power behind those punches, obviously, with his weight that he has. What about where Tali's positioning himself, though? You don't want to lay on the ropes and just let this man take pot shots at you. Exactly. Not, not unless you're going to throw something back, and I, I haven't seen anything, uh, any body shots or uppercuts. Watch the backhand. I called that uh, Chapman fight. Very close fight. Could have gone either way. It was very competitive. That's part of the problem, though, with a four-round fight. And you see a lot of draws these days in four-round fights for that very reason. You really have to dominate to get a win. I will say that the conditioning of Patrice it looks a little bit better than when I saw him before. So he's certainly a, a work in progress, but he has to get going quickly because he's 30 years of age. He's talking to his opponent now. Wow, we saw a knife. Finally a right hand from uh, Tally. Tally's starting to fight back a little bit. He's got some decent punching power. He's got six knockouts in his eight wins. Patrice, four knockouts in his 
eight wins. But I would have to say at this point, Patrice might have been in with the better opposition. Tali's been stopped, though, twice. I think he's already a little winded, uh, Tali. He's landed a couple of right hands and left hooks, but he's on the inside. He's just taken too many shots without coming back with anything of his own. I mean, I know he's trying to set up some sneaky shots, but uh, the way he's going about it, uh, it's not effective at all. I think he's hoping that uh, Patrice will punch himself out and then... And I think that might be a possibility because remember, this is a six-round fight. Both of these guys used to go in four rounds. And Patrice really just throwing volume of punches here, not really trying to come up with any strategies. We end round one. Certainly a good round for him, but he put out a lot. Hi. Round number two, scheduled for six. Arnie Rosenthal along with James Smith. And Smitty, we started to touch on this at the end of the first round, and there really didn't seem to be a lot of strategy behind the punches being thrown by Patrice <laughs> Lejero. Yeah, not much ring generalship and not uh, the greatest defense by, by Tally, but you know, I think they're going to be hard-pressed to survive six rounds, not so much from the devastation of one another, but just the fact of uh, you know, the conditioning of the two. Tally looked a little fatigued in round one, but by the end of that round, Le Haro, who threw a lot more punches, I think spent more of himself. And ho, ho, ho. Keep him up. Keep him up. Okay, Warning now to keep the right. shots up. All right. Awkward sort of left uppercut being thrown from the outside by Patrice. Cooley Hopeye doesn't give you much to hit. He's, they say, list him at six foot, but uh, when he gets down into that defense, finally he fires back there. He's been the six-round distance, incidentally, three times, losing two out of three of those fights, but he's been there. And Patrice has been there just one time, winning a six-round decision over Shane Sutcliffe back in 2001. Well, you can see what uh, Tally's trying to do, I, I, I think, is, is let this guy punch himself out. But the way he's going about doing it, with nothing uh, offensively on his own part, is not the way to get it. He's on the inside right now. The shorter man should do some work to try to break Leha Row down a little bit rather than just sit there and absorb. No, and he's absorbing some pretty good body shots there, too. And that's going to take his legs away. You're right in front of a big guy. That was a nice oh, one. Oh, there it was. Body shot drops. Call Three, hop by. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And those right. are difficult to recover from, those uh, liver shots. Well, I was wondering how much okay. more that he was going to take. Because right. Lejero was really teeing off there almost at will and now you see him trying to tuck those elbows in but it's maybe a little bit too late no and it even hurts when you block the shot would not be surprised to see him go down again from one of those left hooks to the body no and the fact that that Tali's not firing back allows Patrice to go around the outside a little bit and go on the inside of that elbow he's doing a nice job of placing his punches needs to watch out for the wild uh, counters of Kuli Hopai but right now he's not offering much and Tali doesn't know where to cover up at this point. He's trying to keep those elbows tucked in, but when he does, it Punch exposes his face. Much better round in terms of where he's placing his punches for Patrice Lejero. But he squares off. You see when he throws that right hand, he's bringing that right foot, and he's just standing right in front of him. Against the better heavyweight, he's going to have some problems. He's going to need to study this tape. But a good round for undefeated Patrice Lejero. Time. 
And what they need to tell that man inside the corner is to start uh, offering some, some offense. It's been pretty much in a defensive shell the entire time. And finally, Leha Rowe exposed it with these left hooks to the body. And you called for it, Artie, and here's the positioning. Watch how he sets up the left hook and finds an opening and then digs it to the body. A little delayed reaction, and then Kuli Hapai went down in a lot of pain. And those are debilitating shots. They take your legs away and everything else. You can recover from a head shot, but the, uh, the body shots linger. <laughs> Well, as we start round number three, we're going to see how much more of this body punishment Tali Kaluhapai could take down in the second round. And not really paying attention. It was interesting. While you were looking at the replay, I was taking a look at just how much attention Tali was paying to his corner man. And down he goes again. And I think he was thinking about more three, where he was going to sit down four, to start the five, third round. Six, seven. Eight, I don't think he wants nine. much more of this. He gets up at nine and a half. <laughs> One more left hook to the body, and it'll be all Go. she wrote. Oh, he looks over to his corner like, how come you didn't throw the towel in yet? Now he's trying to hot dog buy some time here. Maybe he's hoping the corner can find a towel. <laughs> and his corner man seemed preoccupied with one of the commissioners over there. Well, he's finally fighting back a little bit. Callie's gone down twice. He's way behind in this fight. If nothing else, offer something back. And I, how about the poise of Patrice a little bit? He's not going crazy in there. He's had his man down twice in this fight, and he's just not going wild. He's and picking it, shots, going downstairs, going upstairs. And it's tough against this type of opponent. This fight's over. That's it. That's enough. All done. And a very good stoppage there because there was no reason to let him continue right now. Very workmanlike performance on the part of Patrice Lehero as he will remain undefeated, go to 9-0. and oh, That's his fifth win by way of knockout. Tali Kaluhapai will drop down to 8-5. and five. And it was the body shots that did him in from the very start, Smitty. Left hooks to the uh, body. He broke his hand too. And again, he didn't offer a much... Okay. Much else. And as I told you, I could tell in the corner at the end of round number two, nothing was being offered about how to fix this situation, how to adjust. There was no adjustments, no fixings in whatsoever. No, and it looked like uh, Tally had kind of made up his mind to, to get out of there. But a good win for Lejaro. What about the weight situation? You've got a 277-pound heavyweight like Lehero. Do you try to take 25 pounds off? Do you try to tone up the 277? I, I think you, I think 260 would be a good uh, good weight for him to see the end of this fight. Tally in a very defensive posture, and that's about as defensive as you're, defensive as you're going to get there. I think I think shedding uh, 17 to 20 pounds would be. He could uh, afford to take that off, and that should help him with speed and conditioning and stamina. Because as you said, when he gets in there against better opposition, it's, gonna, it's not going to be like this. Well, the man with all the stamina has the official time of the stoppage. Let's go up to Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, 1 minute, 25 seconds of the third round. The winner by technical knockout and still undefeated, Patrice Lejero. Lejero. All right, good performance, Lahero. When we come back, Ron Kruk will have some last-second thoughts on tonight's